so now we'll start with the dc machine okay first we'll discuss about the construction of the dc machine as you have seen in the previous that for any machine we need two things one is the magnet we have used that is north and south magnet and another is the coil we are using okay so only these two things we are important and we'll use these two things in our dc machine construction but in a different form okay for any machine we are having two things one is stator and another one is the rotor stator as its name suggests what is stator stator is the stationary part right stator is the stationary part and what is rotor rotor is the rotating part so for in every machine you are having one stator and in every machine you are having stator also like in this i felt say what is the stator which is not moving Mag magnets are not moving so magnets are in this case it is stator but in the case of rotor this is coil is the rotor it not necessary that in every machine magnets are stator okay so whichever part is stationary that is stator and whichever part is rotating that is rotor okay so first thing we'll use in this that is magnetic field system first thing we are use in, we are using in this that is magnetic field system as i told you that it is not compulsory that we will use always permanent magnet okay we can use temporary magnet also reason for used temporary magnet is temporary magnets are light in weight okay but permanent magnets are heavy as will if we'll compare with the temporary magnet so we'll generally prefer dc motor especially dc we are studying now so that toy car motor that you are used in the your cars that should be lightweight right not should be of heavy weight that's why we are preferring temporary magnet this is the first reason second reason for using temporary magnet that it is of long life okay as compared with the permanent magnet remember that when you will pick any magnet from the market that like in starting it's good but after as the time passes it will start decreasing its property right but it is not the case with the temporary magnet okay so now the question is how can we make temporary magnet have you listened about the term solenoid solenoid that you have studied in the 10th class how did you make the solenoid we have taken one material that is of iron core okay and we have wound a wire like this we have wound a wire like this and in this we connected a switch and then we supply a battery what is the function of in a solenoid in this case that we are giving battery suppose the switch is connected now the current is flowing through this wire right current is flowing through this wire then in this particular iron core material here north pole is generated and here south pole is generated so what does it mean that it is generating temporary magnetic field right it is generating temporary magnetic field why i am saying temporary because if i'll switch off the connection then now the uh, that iron core material will behave as the same iron core now it will not behave as a magnet so if i'll give the supply then it will behave as a magnet if i switch off the supply then it won't behave it as a magnet right correct now i want to ask one question from you that instead of dc supply suppose we have give ac supply to this winding then what would happen is there any change or there is no change like i have provided dc supply here but instead of providing dc supply i will give ac supply so is there any change related to the magnet or no change it will not magnetizing and demagnetizing again and again it their poles keeps on changing here it is north south then again south north then again north south okay so we don't want this property that our poles keeps on changes we want this property that our poles should be fixed so that's why we are using temporary magnet okay so this is the temporary magnet temporary magnet so it depends on our requirement how can how we need temporary magnet like one magnet or oh sorry one magnet can't be used two magnet three ma uh, four magnet because we'll always use magnets in a pair 
okay so i am drawing like this i am i am using four magnet because four magnet is a standard neither two less neither do more okay this is the material i am using now i wound it for the temporary magnet okay and which supply should i need to give ac or dc dc i told you na this is a what we have done we have used temporary magnet right so i have made this temporary magnet suppose here north pole is generated here north pole is generated here south pole is generated so north south and then north south okay clear this thing this is this winding means if we are having wire wire we are having wound it like this then we'll take it as a winding okay understood now this winding is used for making magnetic field that's why it is known as magnetic field winding that's why it is known as magnetic field winding so you can write down the name so you can write down the name field winding write down field winding okay field winding okay draw this diagram and uh, on the above one like we are having a frame like this um, a circle you can draw a circle okay this is a frame or technically we called it as a yoke normal terms we call it as a frame but in technical terms we called it as a yoke draw this diagram okay so this is what we have done we have drawn this magnet like we have studied now this magnet okay the, so the first part we have studied that is the magnetic field system we have made and this is the part of stator or this is the part of the rotor this is the part of stator because it is not rotating correct this is the part of uh, so these are the field windings these are the frames and these are the yoke and this is known as pole this this is pole south pole or north pole na so this is known as pole and this shape okay this shape like they have tilted shape this shape is known as pole shoe we have given a shape like this and this shape is known as particular pole shoe okay clear got it now next part in this what we need to use this coil right now technically we uh, in normal terms we call it as a coil but in uh, bookish language we call it as a armature so armature is basically a rotating coil armature is basically a rotating coil which we have used like this okay we have used here rectangular coil can we use it in the form of circle <coughs> can we use this uh, rectangular coil in the form of circle yes we can now but instead of taking a proper circle i have taken this shape this is known as laminations this type of shape is known as laminations okay and why we have done laminations why we have taken this shape to reduce eddy current losses okay to reduce eddy current losses understood why we have taken this shape to reduce eddy current losses okay this is the slot like this shape there is some uh, hole in hole kind of this now so this is known as slot and in those slot we can place windings like this 
we can place two winding five four winding and this is of armature that's why this this is known as armature conductor or you can say armature windings we have placed conductor in this slot okay understood this is the armature this is the rotating part of the coil so we consider it as a rotor so we can consider it as a rotor understood so i'm drawing this armature in between this is the armature my drawing is very bad actually you can draw it like that this is the armature and we have placed armature conductor in these slots okay like that in every slot so i'm marking here these are known as armature conductor this is known as armature and this space is known as slots okay understood fine okay and we have done this to reduce eddy current losses now next thing next third thing we we need to use here commutator okay what is commutator i think you have studied in the 10th class also commutator is a device which is used to convert ac to dc now the question is that why we are using commutator because if in if it is the case of motor or generator then in both the cases emf is induced okay in both the cases emf is induced i told you now that in the case of generator we provide mechanical energy then electrical energy is there and due to that electrical energy emf is induced and that emf always induced in form of ac okay according to faraday's law he says that now e is equal to minus n d phi by dt that here emf is induced so this emf will induce according to faraday's law will be always ac ac never dc will induce okay so now the question is we are using dc motor now or dc generator so in output what we which supply we want ac or dc if we are using dc what should be our requirement obviously if we are using uh, no if we are using dc generator then we need dc dc only now and we are what we are getting from the uh, what we are getting from the mot uh, generator ac right but we want dc that's why we have used one device that is commutator which is used to convert ac to dc okay commutator is of this shape like draw a circle and mark it this okay this is known as commutator i am drawing this commutator here in between this is known as commutator okay uh, this is commutator which is used for converting ac to dc okay and in between we are having shaft shaft you know na the on which motor there is a long road on which motor a complete motor is dependent on this shaft only this is known as shaft okay so this is the basic construction of the dc motor or we can say generator this is the most most important question because in every university they generally ask for uh, write down the construction for dc machine okay so i told you the three main part one is the magnetic field system which will use temporary magnet second is the armature which will use in this uh, laminated form third is a commutator which is used to convert ac into dc next we can use brushes also which is make which is used to make the electrical connection understood